Renee Jessica. Elise Stoltzberry. Okay, Renee. I hear you. <laughs> You're doing great, Renee. I feel like every time we do the hello, mm-hmm. it gets better and better. Like, wow. our tuning. It's amazing. I, at least I think Yeah, so. sometimes it's probably not great. But, you know, that time, I think we killed it. I think we killed it that time, yeah. It's Personally? like a, pro- a progressional yeah. betterness to it. We should just be on Broadway already. <laughs> I don't know why they're keeping us away for so long. I know. It's kind of disrespectful. The Mystery Files and Musical. <sighs> Come on. That's it. That's the Come one right on. there. We it's should do that. It's literally meant for us. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Oh. This is the Mystery Files. This hey, is. Welcome back, up? everybody. Also, it's the Halloween special. Halloween special. Hello. Boo. Boo. But not in the way that it sucks. Boo in the way is <laughs> a ghost. <laughs> e. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. I'm Logan Lamaster. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say your last name. I was thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I am Tiffany. Walker. And we're the Mystery Files on Yay. Instagram at the Mystery Files underscore or on linktree.com forward slash the Mystery Files. The Mystery Files. We're on the YouTube. Don't know what our name is, but yes. I'm sure you'll find us if you keep searching that link tree. <laughs> but thank you for checking us out. And Second episode doing YouTube. Yes, we're getting I back on it. that YouTube train. We've missed it. And we're excited. We're back. Yeah. I mean, I you did a great job editing the last episode. Thank you. Like, I was like, okay. It was just a little bit. I just did a little bit. You're like, I just did a little something, something. I just here did a little something, something. <laughs> I just threw it all together so we could put it on the YouTube. Oh my gosh. But yes, I'm excited to be back. And we did a fun last week's episode. Yes, we did good luck, bad luck, and superstitions. Hey. And it's I perfect. loved all the promo stuff we did for that. Yes. Everything just looked so nice and cute. It's so wholesome. Go uh, check out our promo. Logan's been posting away. Stop. It's so cute. I'm trying to be a good marketer or doing good. social media person, coordinate, whatever I do. You're doing you amazing. Know, a little bit of everything. You're posting it all. I can't keep up. Dash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I literally can't. Literally, what was it yesterday? I posted all of it on my story at once. Huh. Was that yesterday? Yeah, you did. Like, yeah. Because you missed a couple of the promotionals well, the thing and you is, were like, oh my god. I wasn't seeing I was tagged in any of it. And then I saw the one you finally posted and I was mm-hmm. like, wait, when did Logan post all other stuff? And so I shared it all to my story. So, not that I care. I'm, I just suck at seeing oh, social media. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do it, care so. about our show. So, yeah. Um, but this is the Mystery Files All-Stars <gasps> Halloween Special. Burr, 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 burr. Now, viewers, listeners... Mm-hmm. Anyone Watchers. who's hearing us in the car next to the person listening to this podcast on the highway, <laughs> and you're they're like, hey, can it. you turn that down? Turn that racket down. It's playing through the sunroof. It's playing through, yeah. They're oh like my yelling. Gosh. I love I, that. I'm sure you're wondering, what yeah. is the Mystery Files <gasps> All-Stars? What is it? What well, is the All-Stars, Logan? Tell us, Well, let please. me tell you, Tiffany. Are you going to tell me? <laughs> I don't think you are. So, what we're doing today is mm-hmm. that a lot of people... Uh, we've talked about it before. We used to be a radio show. Throwback. And at that time period, we did not save any of those episodes. So we did that's not. why if you go to our very first episode as a podcast, mm-hmm. you will see it says season four on it. And you're like, why does it say season four? Where's the other three seasons? Uh, that's when we were a radio show and we couldn't record them. We couldn't record them. So. Which is really sad. This is a look back at three cases we covered back on when we were a radio show. Yes. A little bit shorter, a little bit sweeter than other cases, but we're going to be doing three today. I picked one, uh, Tiffany picked one, and then we Mm -hmm. uh, picked one together, and then we're also thinking about, like, what our viewers at that time liked. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out, like, what was the best one to go about. Yeah, so one's more of, like, a fan favorite one. Yeah. And then two that we really liked. So mm-hmm. it's so much fun. It's crazy because I found two of these. Yeah. Like, literally, it's the exact script mm-hmm. from what I said when we were a radio show. And I'm so stinking excited. No, no, literally, it's like so nuts. It feels like a walk down memory lane almost. I know. Of just like, wow, we used to do that. And that's how we yeah. did it. Well, the thing is, like, for my case, I'm not going to say what it is yet because it's mm-hmm. a surprise. But I was like, okay, I want to do this case because that was really fun. 
And so mm-hmm. then today I was typing in the mystery files on like my Google Docs stuff, mm-hmm. and I literally found the exact case. <sighs> you were like, "Oh my gosh, I don't even need to do any yeah. more research. I can just." Rip I know the same that's one. the thing. I was like, "Should I just search <laughs> to see if I have this?" I didn't think there was any way. Yeah. And then I found the original script, and then I found a couple other cases, and I was like, "What the <laughs> heck? I didn't know I had these." <laughs> That's why I'm excited about this one, too, because it feels a little more, like, chillax. Like, I just feel so cozy in your home right now in a spooky little Halloween moment. Like, it's so wow, cute. Also, you're going to have to try th- I made cookies the other day, and you have to try them because they're amazing. Are there almonds in it? No. Okay, then I can have Listen, them. I was, I just wanted to mix a bunch of stuff in those cookies, so they literally <laughs> like have... poison. No. <laughs> arsenic. Poison. <laughs> gunpowder. <laughs> no. <laughs> like gunpowder. <laughs> I don't know, for fun. Literally, it's just, it's milk chocolate, dark chocolate, uh, butterscotch, and pretzels. Ooh, that sounds yummy, And actually. they're really, they're really stinking good, so. I'll try one after this, a little yes. dinner snack. Yeah, I was like, those would be a cute fall vibe. But yeah, no arsenic this time, maybe next time. <sighs> Darn. Just please. for the vibes. Next time we're on the show, you could, like, poison you. Film me on air. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's like our other Halloween special. Aww. Go watch that for oh, memory lane. The OG Halloween special. The OG. Yes, that one. That one was fun. We scripted that thing. We did. Go watch that on our channel if you want. If you want to be crazy with it. But All I'm excited right. for this All Stars episode. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. So we should get into it because we got three cases to go over. And I believe we are starting with you. We are. Okay. You can still give me that drum roll. Because I'm going to. these people, they don't know what it is. Oh, I believe. Oh, now Yay. that we're on video, they're going to see that I do it like on, on my On your like, face. I felt that face. way last time. I was like, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> okay. All right, ready? Yes. This week on the Mystery Files All Stars special, our first case is past lives. Past lives. Past lives. Like, like reincarnation. Yeah. Yeah. Like kinda? past lives. Like I live oh. and I'm gone. This is because we were just talking I about lived. this yesterday, weren't we? In the car. I, died. I served, and then I died again. Huh. And you died again. I was just talking about this in the car yesterday. Remember the, when we were going to the gym? Mm-hmm. Danielle and I were talking about uh, the movie Fluke. I don't know about what that the is. dog reincarnation. Oh, oh it's and not I, like I told a her dog's to watch purpose, it. where it's like there are it, a bunch of different dogs. Uh, no, it's one. It's kind of a similar idea, but it's okay. not the same. But yeah, we were talking about it yesterday in the car. But mm. let's get on to okay. it. case. <clears throat> the idea that people are born and reborn, that we all have had past lives, date back at least 3,000 years. Discussions of the subject can be found in the ancient traditions of India, Greece, and the Celtic Druids, and reincarnation is a common theme among New Age philosophies. Those who believe in reincarnation say clues about our past lives can be found in our dreams, our bodies, and our souls. The following psychological, emotional, and physical phenomena all may hold hints as to who we once were. That's our Ooh. intro. Bow, bow, bow. Yeah, because I feel like past lives plays a big part in like all, not maybe not all cultures and religions, mm-hmm. but a good amount of them for it sure. Does. Like it's something that comes up a lot. I feel like. Do you remember when we did our past life regression session? Yes. And I was just talking about this the other day because oh I was telling gosh. someone they have to try it. <laughs> Guys, it's wild. We, yeah, this was when we were a radio show. I think we talked about it. Did, no. We, no, wait. We didn't even do the past life regression session in the time that we did this case. Yeah, that was after we. We did might this have case. talked about when we did the past life regression session in a different episode, for something else. But like, if you don't know, Logan and I, yes. <laughs> throwback, when we were basically orientation leaders, we lived in our apartment <laughs> by ourselves for a couple weeks, mm-hmm. and so during one of those times, our first time doing this, we did a past life regression session to a YouTube video, and it was crazy. Wild. And weren't wasn't it some way we were kind of connected in the past life? Do you remember? I think so. I don't remember. Because like, you said there was imagery in yours I, that was in mine, I think. Wasn't there a field outside yours? You were inside of a farmhouse, and I was outside of a farmhouse. Yeah. Yes, 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 because yes. Because the only yes. thing I remember about mine, you I know, remember... like that green pasture. Yes. I remember I was in this green field. I got a little off topic. This is my past life we're talking <laughs> That's okay. about. This is our podcast. This is our podcast. <laughs> but I was literally in this green field. Obviously, the field's green. And in the background, there was this farmhouse way in the distance and in like this little thing i was like this woman who was pregnant and i was holding a baby and the baby was crying in my arms and i was dying and i heard gunshots in the distance i heard gunshots in the distance and that was what i remember 
Yeah, and Did that you... was my past life. And I think my theory for yours is that you were in, like, like the, the war or something. Like, you were in yeah. some type of battle of, or some sort. There was something. It was, like, long grass. Yeah. Like, I remember it very vividly. But the thing is, I have an active imagination. My active yeah. ima- imagination, or was it, like, actually my past life? Well, that that's the thing. Is like... It's hard people, to tell. W- w- during that video, they were like, go with your gut. Go with your instinct. I'm like, my gut and my instinct are insane. Yeah. Like, I can't, I d- I can't trust if my gut is actually my gut or if I'm just crazy. <laughs> well, the thing is, they're also telling people who have, like, experience, one, storytelling, and two, like, writing scripts yeah. to, like visualize visualize a past life it's yeah like, i'm like i'm literally just writing a script in my head what do you mean how yeah. do i know i'm not just creating this in my brain because i i am a writer you know <laughs> it's kind of cute at the same time because you're like self-inserting you're like yeah oh. but i'm like where is this memory coming from <laughs> i don't know but yeah that was my past life oh my gosh and all you remember from yours is inside of a house is that what you said or yep. just i that was so long ago Fully yeah don't remember i remember nothing year. about the second time we did it i don't remember so we did it another time with Danielle. We did do another time with yeah, Danielle. Yeah, but I don't remember that time. Stories. But yeah, that was our past life, guys. Go try it. It's on YouTube. The ads kind of suck. So like, It's kind of fun. Yeah, no, that's the thing. They like put you in a trance. <laughs> yeah, you get into it and it's like, okay, here's an ad. And it's like, like it's like 45 to an yeah. hour long video and you're like deep in trance and then they're just like, stop by and get a Hyundai Subaru. I was just going to say like, Toyota Honda. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to flip my lid. Just let me have my peace. It's, it's the most crazy thing in the world. Like, I yeah. just remember we were like, oh my god. The thing is, it's hard enough for me to, like, get into the zone when I'm, like, doing mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Like, I can't really, I don't know, go into trances or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So stuff like that. It's like, it's already interrupting me. How am I supposed to do it? Exactly. But go figure it out. Go see if you can do it. Let us know how it goes for you. Mm-hmm. But Please. do you want some signs that you've had a past life? What I signs do. would you look for? Hmm. What, well, that you're asking I was me, going or is to ask. that rhetorical? It could be rhetorical. So the first one, <laughs> <laughs> the first one would be deja vu, which everyone oh, loves. Great. Love that one. So most of us have experienced a sudden, surprising feeling that an event we are experiencing has happened to us exactly this way before. Psycholo- psychologist Arthur Funkhauser of the great C.G. Name. Young Institute has broken down this phenomena into three categories. So it's deja vecu, an event already experienced or lived through, deja senti, something already felt, perhaps triggered by a voice or music, or deja visite, a place so familiar that we feel we've been there before. So I remember this stuff, like, vaguely from when we talked about it before. So, yeah, there's, like, different things that trigger these different experiences. Mm -hmm. I feel like the one that I most commonly have experienced was... The deja, <laughs> the deja vu, an event already experienced or lived through. Like I'll have a moment yeah. when I'm staring at something and I'm like, "Oh, I've done this before." Like You're I'm like, cleaning yeah, a specific thing. It's like a repetitive thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you realize you have patterns in your life, and you're like, oh, no, this is weird. Yeah. Like, it's I kind of like, just wake up and do routine work. It's creepy. Yeah. I don't like it. But although scientists and psychiatrists insist there are neurological explanations for these phenomena, others believe these strange feelings could be vague, fleeting memories of past lives. Mm. So I feel like for me, I feel like it would mostly just feel like it happened at, in a different timeline at the same yeah. time. That's kind of how I feel when it happens. I'm like, did mm. I do this in a different timeline? Or I mean, like, I, I broke some wall? I wonder if it's similar to maybe not necessarily the same place uh, but, like, maybe a similar situation or the same mm-hmm. feeling. Like, yeah. you know, you grow as a person. Do you remember how, like, you grew in that moment in one of your past lives? Yeah. That would be I don't crazy. know. It's also, like, the butterfly effect. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, what if this happened in a different timeline? But, like, this is the timeline that I chose to, like, wipe this thing off. Right. Or this is a timeline I decided to do that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I did it before. That's literally, like... Again, I think we I talked about this already, like yeah. literally last episode. But that's literally mm-hmm. the plot also of like everything everywhere all at once. Oh, like I need to watch whole, it still. The that's whole so behind. concept is very much like, what if I wiped this thing instead of that thing, and how does that make like a parallel dimension? Going back to another mm-hmm. case we've done before, parallel um, dimension. You know, so it's like yeah. you have like those flashback moments of like, why do I feel like I've done this? I love it. It freaks yeah. me out, but I like it. It's very fun. So, now we're going to get on to the idea of dreams and nightmares. So, first off, this idea scares the heck out of me, because if my <laughs> nightmares have anything to do with a past life, then I'm 
You're done. I didn't do You're well done. in my existence as uh-uh. a soul. I'm just saying. You were like final girl a lot, or scream queen. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> final girl in every timeline, and that's just not fair. You so. haven't been in this one yet, but just give it time. Just give it time. Give, I, it, give it time. I think I'm feathering up. I think I could quit. <laughs> I think I think I actually want to retire now. I, I think don't think I'm I want retired. to be a final girl anymore. At the age of, at a ripe age of 23, I think I'm <laughs> sick of it. I think I've been through enough, and I'm I'm ready for my my grandma era. It's grandma era. There my you go. my calm grandma era. I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> so dreams and nightmares, memories of past lives can also manifest themselves as recurring dreams and nightmares believers say dreams of mundane or ordinary life activities may suggest a specific local you inhabited during a past life people who appear regularly in your dreams may have had a special relationship with you in another life Mm. likewise nightmares may be reflections of past life traumas that may have clung to our spirits and haunt our sleep yep (laughs) creepy Yep, sounds right. This also reminds me, um, I read this book last year, I want to say. It's called Meet Me in Another Life. And it was, like, these two people who, like, kept dying, and then they would meet each other in another life. And, like, the girl kept remembering this guy's soul, but he wasn't remembering her at first. And they couldn't remember, like, they couldn't figure out how they kept reconnecting in these different lives. That's such a cool episode concept. I know. I mean, episode, that's such a cool book concept movie same yeah would be a great movie the book but then the book takes like this crazy turn and you're just like what What? the actual heck like it turns into like a sci-fi type vibe okay that's cool. you have to read it meet me in another life if you're a reader go stink and check that out because that who crazy wrote it down write it down yeah no that just reminds me um like, there's this one guy who, like, shows up in my dreams all the time, and, like, Ooh. honestly, no, it's, like, good. He's, like, cute. Okay. Is he cute? He's, no, he's, like, very cute, <laughs> and I've never seen this man in yeah. my life. They're always, like, saying, like, oh, well, you know, like, in your dreams, this mm-hmm. person, like, you've had to see them somewhere at some point. I'm, like, yeah. I've never seen this man in my life. Sorry to this man. What if he was, like, an extra in a movie or something, and you saw him in the background and didn't, like, understand that it was a person in, like, a, a movie? Hmm. Like Maybe, how but I like being right also, so I'm going to no. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> You're crazy. Also, speaking on the, the trauma part, like with the uh-huh. heart, I yeah. must have had, you, you know how yesterday you were like, Logan, you have such a big heart? You do have a big heart. I, I have know. a big heart because of all the traumas of the past life. Oh like my if we're talking gosh. big heart, yeah. it's got, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with what uh, I did to my darn self. You just keep past. on, you keep on piling it on. I, it's like a slop, like just yeah. a slop, like wah, 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 wah. At first I thought I was going to say, I thought you were trying to lead to the fact that like, yeah, my heart's so big, just like my ego. That's where I thought wow. you were going. That would have been a good joke. I'm writing it that for next It would have been good. Episode, Write though. it. Why do you think your ego is perfectly fine? Aw, You're thank perfect. You, it, you, you think you I can, have just enough ego? You, you, maybe a little more. Sometimes you got to lower it, but like right now you can. <laughs> I'm just. Right yeah, there. you're right there. You can go a little higher though. Okay. I believe in you. I'm you, better you than can you. go you can go a little <laughs> over the edge. I can see it. I'm better than you. You need to start pouring. Perfect. <laughs> Lower it now. <laughs> Let's put you back at the bar. Okay, so on to fears and phobias. It's beneficial to humans to have fears of things that are dangerous to us, but many people suffer from phobias that are completely irrational. Fear of water, birds, certain numbers, mirrors, plants, specific colors, the list goes on and on. For those who believe in past lives, these fears may be carried on from a previous lifetime. A fear of water may indicate past life trauma. For example, perhaps in another manifestation, you met your end by drowning. Do you have any weird irrational fears? Um, like... I feel like I have a lot of the normal ones. Like, snakes freak me out a lot. Like, Mm -hmm. I just never like snakes. But I think that happened in this life. Like, I think I know why I'm afraid of snakes. Did you get bitten? Um, Or they're just creepy to you? No, we just had snakes, like, growing up and stuff. And then Mm -hmm. also, um, maybe I I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but uh, the Harry Potter movies actually messed me up. Specifically the first one. Yeah. When he falls into the the tank. Oh. And he's, like, in there with the anaconda thing. The mega that snake. Me up. Was that the first one? Or the second one? That's the first no, that one. That is the first one. And then in the second one, I think, is the one with the basilisk. Yeah, yeah. When it's like chamber a secrets. giant snake and it's going to like murder you. I. To nope. open that chamber so of I'm secrets. I'm terrified of snakes now. Um, oh, shut d- 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 Quit playing. That's quit what playing. he says. Throwback. You better. You better ooh. Also, Rip Hagrid. 
just wanted to say. Oh, yeah, I saw Passed that. away. Rest yeah. in peace, good sir. Rest in peace. But yeah. Hashasa. What about you? Oh, fears. I have a well, any of Other than your anxiety. Fears. Um, well, all, here's are the ones from my childhood. Right. My rational fears from childhood, which I've already definitely said on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. I was afraid of, like, bathtub drains, because I was afraid I would go down the drain and die. I was <laughs> afraid to, like, walk under buildings that had icicles, because I was afraid I'd get stabbed. I don't think I knew that one. That yeah. one's, that one's a real fear, though, that, that one happens. was. Well, because they were on my house when I was little, so that I was always happens, scared though. that, like, that was gonna die if it fell on me. Um trying to think i feel like maybe the, i had a lot more oh i was afraid of stairs that had big gaps in between them because i was afraid i was gonna fall between the gaps and die mm-hmm. but yeah so normal fears yeah pretty normal. as a child standard standard <laughs> fears but yes now we're gonna get on to some spooky examples of past life stories Ooh. we've got the Pollock twins in 1957, two sisters, Joanna and Jacqueline Pollock, and their friend Anthony were tragically killed in a car accident as they walked to their local church in North Cumberland, England. Their parents were left grief-stricken. John and Florence hoped that their, hoped and prayed their daughters would come back, and it seemed their pr- prayers were answered. One year later, twin girls, Jennifer and Jillian, were born. The Pollocks were surprised to find that Jennifer, the younger twin, had birthmarks on her body and face, in exactly the same place as Jacqueline had. With that, began a series of uncanny similarities between the twins and their dead sisters. At the age of two, the twins started to ask for toys that had once been owned by Jacqueline and Joanna. Which is already getting creepy. Yeah, no, I remember this one. I, yeah. I, yeah, wow. I, literally, I don't think we covered this case in, like, three years, and mm-hmm. I remember now. Mm-mm. You're like, it's yeah, coming back to me. That one's crazy. So, yes. the girls, uh, their claimed parents had never seen or heard about the toys before, so the girls' parents said, yeah, they didn't know, know what these toys were. Mm-hmm. At four, they began to recognize places they had never been or seen before. One time, they pointed to a school they claimed to be their school, and that they remembered playing in the playground behind it. The school was the one that Jacqueline and Joanna had attended when they were alive. So, that's essentially that story in, like, a nutshell. Like, just a bunch of weird stuff these girls, yeah. like, knew about when they had no reason to know about. And were like, that's my school. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do with that. Like, as a parent, mm-hmm. that's, like, a lot. Like, to, like, have to Yeah, it, and I'm sure like, that would whoa. mess you up, like, after, if you've lost, like, two children. Something very tragic, and then it's, yeah. like, the kids are kind of, like, because you want to get over that trauma and, like, move past it. But then yeah. it's, like, if they keep kind of giving those same signs, it's, like, yeah, it's scary. I mean, I feel like that could really go both yeah. ways. Like, it could either, like, make you full of more grief because mm. you miss your other two daughters, mm-hmm. or it would give you, like, a sense of hope of, like, Okay, they're living through these girls. Yeah, if that makes or at any least sense. it's like uh, it's not a coincidence. Even if it's not them, it's kind yeah. of like wow, like th- this is this is something, and I want to find meaning in this. Yeah, and it's nice that they can find meaning in it. But mm-hmm. yeah, so those two girls were one, and then the story is called "I Was Your Mom in Heaven." I'm like remembering all of these as soon as I start <laughs> reading them. The story was called "I Was Your Mom in Heaven." So it says, "My three-year-old said I was your mom in heaven multiple times." When I was six weeks pregnant with her, my mom died unexpectedly the day she found out the secret that I was pregnant at 40 with what would be her last and 21st grandchild. That's a lot of kids. Um, We were going. That is. We were going to surprise her on her 75th birthday, two weeks later, but a niece let the secret out. When my girl was four, we were looking through picture boxes. I have no family pictures posted in my house. Later that night, I realized my girl took three pictures of my mom and put them in her room. She's never seen pictures of my mom because when I asked her why she took those pictures, she said, because I'm pretty. No, no, no. no. What's with, what's with kids just saying stuff? I don't trust children. Children, if you're listening, why do you say things like that? Why do do you you say things? Why do you want to creep people out? Yeah. What are you benefiting from horrifying the people around you? Oh my God. What are you benefiting? That's just something like every single case. It's just, they always got to say something like, absolutely Mm-mm. bonkers you said you want to be scared <laughs> i got gotcha. you no right exactly okay and then we'll do one more okay. i'll do this one okay this one's called this little boy's memory of being a pilot so james langer uh began waking up screaming when he was two when his parents asked him what the matter was he'd say airplane crash on fire little man can't get out 
when he was three, he checked over his toy plane like a pilot does during a pre-flight check. Whoa. He also identified a drop tank without ever being told what it was. How would he even know that? I know. What year was this? Sorry. Um, it doesn't say. Oh. It says, under the instruction of counselor and therapist Carol Bowman, James's parents asked him to share his plane-related rel- memories, and the nightmare subsided after that. He said he'd flown a Corsair, which was attacked by Japanese forces and crashed, leading to his death. James seemed to remember highly specific details from his life. The boat he departed from was called Natoma, he said, and someone named Jack Larson flew on his plane. His dad, Bruce, discovered that the Navy had an aircraft carrier called Natoma Bay, and there was a Jack Larson living in Arkansas. James signed drawings, James III, and said he was shot at World War II's Battle of Iwo Jima. And sure enough, mm. Bruce learned that a man named James N. Houston Jr. was shot and killed at Iwo Jima. James said the plane was hit to the engine, and similarly, a rear gunner on the plane next to it told ABC News the plane was, quote, hit head on right in the middle of the engine. Wow, that's horrifying. Nuts. That's nuts. And that's why he probably kept checking the engine, too. Like, yeah. making sure his little toy plane was, like, fine. I don't like that. Uh uh-uh, uh, that's. That's creepy. Wow. That reminds me of, um, I was, one time I was watching all these different YouTube videos on, there was some show about kids with, like, past lives, Mm -hmm. and there was a story of, like, this kid who was obsessed with the Titanic when he was little, Mm -hmm. and he kept telling these stories about, like, like, he would draw the Titanic from, like, memory and perfect, and he went to, like, this, uh, Titanic museum where you could, like, walk through the entire ship, and he was, like, well, not walk through it, but there was, like, a little game type thing where you could oh, act gotcha, like you were gotcha. walking through the ship that's cool though actually. and the thing is he was naming all the different rooms and knew exactly where he was going and he kept talking about how he died in a boiler room this little boy and he was having nightmares about dying in the titanic that's wild it was a hot mess oh my but gosh yes i just past like, lives are whack i just like is that all of them like, yeah the that's all we have for this case okay and we can save all the this is a mystery until the end because okay. this is all a mystery everything is this is all a mystery but yes um, that was the past lives case i was i was just like thinking with that of like what depending on what years they were yeah i could see like kids nowadays like going on youtube and searching all this stuff and being yeah. like yeah i was this in a past life or like doing this because i absolutely would have done that as a kid if yeah I, if we would have had because we had youtube when we were kids but, we did like, we weren't we didn't have as much as accessibility to it like it was dial up was still a thing yeah um but if i had very easy access to the internet i'd be yeah. on there on youtube trying to be like i want to learn how to do this 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 yeah. and that i'd be like yeah i used to be this in a past life just to mess with people you would you yeah. crazy that's <laughs> I don't, awful well that's what i'm thinking these kids did but i'm pretty sure from what it sounds like these years are probably like before these are like internet timelines four-year-olds too. the thing is i feel like a four-year-old would not even understand you don't how think to a four-year-old even... could go goo gaga and t- goo goo gaga <laughs> my plane crashed and the <laughs> engine was shot down yeah i don't think a kid yeah know that's that. pretty that's pretty adult uh language, yeah i guess yeah kind of yeah <laughs> i don't know Oh, a four-year-old. Well, that's but yeah. so wild. I just felt like past lives, even now when oh we were gosh. talking about that. Like, you said deja vu. Right. Th- I was I was back in our radio station studio. Aww, you said, let's for pause for time. a little break. That's what you said. You said, let's play Maggie Rogers' past life. That was the song we played back when we were a radio show. <laughs> yeah, we, I cannot <laughs> believe we tried to do music. That uh, was so funny. Now we can't, like, we'll go, I don't know if we have enough material for the show. And then it'll be like an hour and 20. Yeah, that's how it always is, though. Yeah. We can't help ourselves. <laughs> let's walk us. All right. So that was Tiffany's past case, past lives, our first all star lineup of the <laughs> Halloween special. Yeah, yeah. No, I believe it is. Is this my turn? Yes. Do you want a drum roll? I would love a drum roll. Oh my I gosh. need a drum roll. Now you get to see me drumming. You ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You also have better rhythms with it. Okay. This week, uh, wait, how did you do it? Wait. It was this like... week on the Mystery Files All Stars. Okay. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Got it. Okay. This week on the Mystery Files All Stars, our second case we'll be covering is the case of the New Jersey Devil. <laughs> 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 
Come Yay. on, cryptids. Come on, OG. cryptid. Oh, I'm so excited. If y'all don't know, mm-hmm. this is the first cryptid we ever did Aww, on the show. Oh, that's so stinking cute. And we're like 20 some cryptids in now, like probably. We're elderly. A good amount of them. We're elderly cryptids. Yeah, we probably talked about enough cryptics inside of the cryptic episodes. Like, I remember I was going to do that frog one, and I like, didn't oh. have enough material for it during the Loch Ness Monster episode. Eee, that's cute. We see many cryptids. <laughs> But yeah, so if you scroll back all the way down on our Instagram, you can see a picture of like that like little donkey fly. Aww. <laughs> all right, so Devil. <clears throat> in South Jersey and Philadelphia folklore in the United States, the Jersey Devil, also known as the Leeds Devil, is a legendary creature said to inhabit the forests of Pine Barrens in South Jersey. The creature is often described as a flying biped with hooves, but there are many variations of this creature. Ooh. The common uh, description is that of a bipedal kangaroo-like or wyvern-like creature with a horse or goat-like head, leathery bat-like wings, horns, Mm -hmm. small arms with clawed hands, legs with cloven hooves, and a forked tail. It has been reported to move quickly and is often described as emitting a high-pitched, blood-curdling scream. Great. A beautiful, beautiful story mm-hmm. just right off the bat 10 like, out of 10 this... what did it say about its tail um a what tail uh, uh-huh. i need to know more a fork tail like a devil tail. fork tail like, it looks like a fork kind of that's like, very disturbing um, absolutely not and the leathery wings if you just look up like new jersey devil people can see this too but um this is like the <laughs> oh, standard like, i literally look hate that yeah he's that's not so great. creepy he doesn't look right no he doesn't <laughs> poor guy um, but here is the origin of the legend, um, which I wanted to point out to you before I get into this little topic, uh, mm-hmm. cause this is like a little story through it. Um, I've actually been to the house where he was apparently born. I think, I, do you remember I talked about that? No, I really? forgot. I forgot. Yeah, what? no, I was at the house that supposedly he was like born <sighs> in. It was like a tourist. It wasn't really a tourist attraction. There wasn't anyone there. We were just like in our car and my mom was like, that's the house. And I'm That's like, oh, so really? cool. What? Okay. How was it? It was really creepy, actually. And you'll see why. Okay. In just a second. I'm excited. So, so, according to popular folklore, the Jersey Devil originated with a Pine Barrens resident named Jane Leeds, known as Mother Leeds. The legend states that Mother Leeds had 12 children, and after finding she was pregnant for the 13th time, she cursed the child out of frustration, crying that the child should be born the devil. Great. (laughs) Cool. Great. Just, like, manifesting right off the bat. Girl, uh, why'd you do that? (laughs) It's 1735 right now, and she's (laughs) manifesting the worst. (laughs) It's already an evil sound in time. Anything before 1900s is probably not... It's not great. Right. It's all, like... Witches, Witches, evil, and Satan. devil, Satan. Yeah. Yep. They created all the ghosts we have the, left. The spring Thanks. Hill Jack. Yeah. Men on fire. Like, <laughs> no. Uh, so in 1735, Mother Leeds was in labor on a stormy night while her friends gathered around her. Born as a normal child, the 13th child changed into a creature with hooves, a goat's head, fat wings, and a forked tail, growling and screaming. The <laughs> child beat everyone with its tail before flying up the chimney and heading into the pines. In some versions of the tale, Mother Leeds was supposedly a witch, and that the child's father was the devil himself as well. Oh. Some versions of the legend also state that there is a subsequent attempt to local uh, clergymen to exorcise the creature from the Pine Barrens area. Ew. So apparently there's a legend that they like tried to do an exorcism in the forest there that he came out of. I forgot a lot about, like, the origin of the New Jersey Devil. Right? Creepy. Right? It's, it's like, really scary, like, to think about. So, yeah, just, like, right off the bat, like, that's, like, a big thing. I, have you not seen anything about the Jersey Devil before? Like, no. Because, like, I remember all the time my mom would turn on uh, Jersey Devil, like, um, Discovery Channel. I mean, things, I feel like, like I've seen I've seen like bits and pieces of things, but like, and I know we obviously did a case on this, but I feel like my brain didn't absorb the memory as much as it should yeah. have in terms of like the 
yeah. like, lore of it. Like, how he came to be. You should look up a YouTube video sometime of just, like, New Jersey Devil. Yes. Like, maybe we could watch it after this. That'd yeah. be kind of funny. Just to see, like... If it Lord. holds up or if it's just, like, I was six and terrified. I bet there's some on the Discovery Plus app thing. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're on YouTube also because <laughs> yes. it's, like, 2004. Like, uh, who's, who's coming for them? No. Who's going to take it off? <laughs> Jerks. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that is um kind of that idea there. And then, okay. So, this is talking a little bit more in depth about um the lead devil. Uh, so, uh, Regal notes. The lead devil had become a legendary monster or ghost story in the southern New Jersey area into the early to mid-19th century. Stories continue to circulate in southern New Jersey of the lead devil, a monster wandering the Pine Barrens. Mm. An oral tradition of the lead devil monster ghost stories subsequently became established in the Pine Barrens area. So it was like a big thing in like the Pine Barrens area. It'd be like, oh yeah, the Jersey devil, he's out there in the forest. Mm. Like That was like a huge thing. I'd be so scared to go outside. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh. So, although the Leeds Devil legend has apparently existed since the 18th century, Regal states uh, that more modern depictions of the Jersey Devil, as well as the now persuasive Jersey Devil name, first became truly standardized in current form during the early 20th century. So this is like a little quote in there saying, Mm -hmm. During the pre-revolutionary period, the Leeds family, who called the Pine Barrens home, soured its relationship with the Quaker majority. The Quakers saw no hurry to give their former fellow religionists an easy time in circles of gossip. His wives had all died, as had his several children. His son, Titan, stood accused by Benjamin Franklin of being a ghost. The family crest had winged dragons on it in a time when thoughts of independence were being born. These issues made the Leeds family political and religious monsters. From all this over the time of the legend of the Leeds Devil was born, references to the Jersey Devil do not appear in newspapers or other printed material until the 20th century. Uh, The first major flap came in 1909. It is from these sightings that the popular image or creature with the bat-like wings, horse-like head and claws, and general air of a dragon became standardized. So just like off the bat with that, what I think it's like saying too is like um, the people at that time really did not like the (laughs) Leeds family and they would find any way possible to make their lives terrible. You're a witch. You're a ghost. Right. Your dad's Satan. <laughs> no. Right? Okay. So, the last thing I'll talk about here, too, is we're going to talk about reported sightings. Ooh. The fun stuff. So, there have been many claims of sightings and occurrences involving the Jersey Devil. According to legend, while visiting the Hanover Millworks to inspect his cannonballs being forged. I didn't even know that oh, that'd be a thing. No. I don't know. How do you forge a cannonball? This is the same article I read from last time. I do not remember him going over there forging cannonballs. So I must have like Blacked blocked out. that out of my <laughs> There's a, well then again, this was how, do how you many forge years ago? A cannonball? Wait. What year was on. this? Twenty probably twenty nineteen. Twenty yeah, twenty twenty. No, it um, wouldn't have been twenty twenty, been twenty nineteen. This first one, year. It doesn't say exactly. I think uh I think this one might have been eighteen twenty. How do you forge a cannonball? How do you forge a cannonball? Oh my yeah. there's YouTube tutorials of how to do it. Wait, is it is it getting it out of like the shooter thing? <laughs> oh, wait a second. I think <laughs> I'm so dumb. No, what does it say? <laughs> no, okay. What okay. is it? So forging is making or shaping metal objects by heating it under a fire. I was thinking like forgery, like oh. someone was forging. So and they're literally balls. just they're literally just making the cannon. <laughs> is that essentially what is happening? He's just checking oh. on how they're making the cannonballs. Well, don't we look like we lived in that time period? How are we, we supposed also to look know? Like, uh, Smiths. What's it called? The Smiths? <laughs> no. Locksmiths? Black, no. Blacksmith? Blacksmiths. Is that there what it's go. called? A oh, fire person? Probably blacksmiths in another life. That's kind of cute. Aw, I Ugh. couldn't have been. Because I'm a woman. They would have burned me for being a Maybe witch. Maybe not. Maybe if I was there. 
Come on. You're telling me they wouldn't have thought I was a witch back then? I'd be like, hey, guys, she's cool. Leave her alone. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think that's enough? Nah. <laughs> you would have joked and been like, ha, 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 Tiffany's a witch. And they'd have been like, ah, yeah, burn her alive. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, I was kidding. I was kidding. And they've already burned me. I was me. doing a bit. I was doing a bit. They've already, already they've gone. thrown me in a lake to see if I'd swim. Oh, my that, God. That's what, that's what would have happened. Oh, Dead. my God. Dead. So, okay, I guess the end of that cannonball story yeah. is that they were testing out the cannonballs and they are almost 100% sure they hit the New Jersey Devil like oh. as he was flying. Like, so he's they dead? Went, wow. Well, probably not. I mean, if you have devil magic, you're probably like... You're probably still flying. Yeah. Even if he got injured, he probably like healed instantly or Aww, something. Jersey you know? Devil lives on. Aw. That's, that's the name of a song. The Jersey so Devil lives on. Is he still like spotted? Oh, yeah, the sightings go up till, like, the, like, I think even, like, the 2020s. I don't have an oh exact one. Okay. But a lot of them, like, are there. Fun. We should go to New Jersey just to see if we can spot him. Aw, next Halloween special. Aw, we plan a trip. That's actually really cute. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. So, this is about a wave of sightings in 1909. <gasps> hey, okay. So, during the week of January 16th, through the 23rd of 1909, newspapers published hundreds of claims, encounters with the Jersey Devil from all over South Jersey and the Philadelphia area. Ooh. Among these alleged encounters were claims that the creature attacked a trolley car and a social club as well. Um, the police in Camden, which was a city that was like nearby, um, and Bristol, Pennsylvania, supposedly fired on the creature to no effect. Mm. Other reports initially concerned unidentified footprints in the snow, but soon sightings of creatures resembling the Jersey Devil were being reported throughout the South Jersey area and as far away as Delaware and as oh. far west as Maryland. Oh my gosh! So the widespread newspaper coverage created fear throughout the Delaware Valley, prompting a number of schools to close <gasps> and workers to stay home. Vigilante groups and groups of hunters roamed the Pines Woods and countrysides in search of the devil. During this period, it is rumored that the Philadelphia Zoo posted a $10,000 reward for the creature. The offer prompted a variety of hoaxes, including a kangaroo that was equipped <laughs> with artificial claws and bat wings. You're joking. No, that's all Okay, that's now imagine, real. imagine like we have a day, we're off school because there's a snow day, right? Mm -hmm. And they're getting off school for a couple days because the Jersey Devil is just yeah. flying around. I can't tell if I'd be terrified or excited or like think it was like kind of cool. I like, think it was cool. Like whole, because there's, yeah, me too. Listen, I feel like it's kind of <laughs> the same vibe of like, hey, you know it's a danger, but also you're like, thank God I get a break. Because that was the feeling when like the pandemic started in mm -hmm. terms of like, we get a break, not in terms yeah. of, like, there was actual danger. We all thought it was two-week little, like, walk uh, yeah. around with It was like, family. oh, good, we get finally, like, a little bit of a break. But obviously that turned into yeah. a very bad time. But, like... Well, for them, same... they were only off school for a couple of days. Yeah, and they were, and they, they were just fine with the Jersey Devil. <laughs> they did just fine. Yeah, no, exactly. So I just think it's so wild to think, because I've been to the Philadelphia Zoo, so it's just mm -hmm. wild to think that, like, they put up a wanted poster supposedly yeah that's, that's so cool that is i would see that's the thing that would never happen now like, i know in modern day like, we would not see like wanted posters for like cryptic creatures that makes me sad it. i need it i need it let's just do it <laughs> what, what if we oh my god oh let's put fake ones around the city and scare people that'd just actually be really cute wanted bigfoot reward thirty thousand dollars like for promo yeah season eight Summer why, tapes. Why Summer is that actually? That's actually really cute. Summer tape season four. Yeah, but what, what if someone actually finds something? We don't have any money. We well, could like put a little thing on the bottom that we're like, "Hey, we're lying." By the way, <laughs> just kidding. And there's just a QR code. We on go it. serious inquiries, inquiries only. Right. Exactly. Mm. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much everything with the Jersey Devil. The last thing is just kind of just you know the Jersey Devil is just very big in pop culture. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been in countless. Uh, Horror movies, horror TV shows, Discovery Channel things, mm. and a lot of video games, actually. He's been in quite a few video games, which I thought to be kind of interesting. I'd like to play one of those games. Me too. Creepy. Maybe I'll find them. Maybe my Switch has one. Aw, there Maybe you go. Maybe not, but... Maybe it does, though. I'm about to find out when I get home. There you go. <laughs>
Yes. All right, so that is my case. Ooh, I guess now we're on to the shared case then. This is the yes. fan favorite. Should I, should I drum roll for you again? Yes. I'm going to do it on here, though. I think. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. This is the fan favorite case, everyone. Fan favorite. The big one. People really like All the big one. Ready? All ready for our fan favorite case for the mystery files. It is Dilatov. Pass, 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 pass. Dilatov. 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 pass. And I hope I'm saying that correct, but I've always said it that way, so I hope it's correct. <laughs> Yeah, dial top pass. Dial dial up pass. Dial top pass. Dial up pass. Dial up. Dial up. Dial up. Wow. Cool beans. But yeah, for this case, yeah. Logan and I are going to be mm-hmm. rolling off each other. I'll say a little, Logan's <laughs> going to say a little, and we're just going to go back and forth. We're so. going to switch off. I don't think we've ever switched off before. I so. know, it's going to be different little vibes. I so know, we I'm hope excited. you guys enjoy this one. This one's for you. This yes. is all for you. Love you the most. And let's get rolling. So. In January of 1959, in Russia, nine Soviet college students died under mysterious circumstances while hiking through the Ural Mountains in what's now known as Dilatov Pass incident. On January 31st, 1959, a 23-year-old ski hiker named Igor Dilatov embarked on a journey to reach the peak of Orotin, a mountain in the northern Urals. The Soviet college student brought a team of eight experienced hikers from the Ural Polytechnic Institute, along with him on the adventure. Before he left, Dilatov had told his sports club that he and the team would send them a telegram as soon as they returned, but none of the hikers were ever seen alive again. It is so scary. It's ominous. It, like, reminds me, like, right off the bat, I don't know if I originally thought this when we did this case, I probably did, but, like, it gives me Until Dawn vibes in that, like, video game. And I know I've talked about that before with Wendigos, but kind of the idea of just, like, Going up in the mountains and not returning. Just disappearing. Mm-hmm. So, the hikers enter Dilatov. From what was recovered from cameras and diaries discovered at the site of their deaths, investigators were able to piece together that on February 1st, the hiking team began to make their way through the then-unnamed pass leading to Otorten. As they pushed through the hostile climate towards the base of the mountain, they were hit with the snowstorms that ripped through the narrow pass. Decreasing visibility caused the team to lose their sense of direction, and instead of moving towards a torten, they accidentally deviated west and found themselves on the slope of a nearby mountain, this mm. mountain that is nicknamed Dead Mountain by the indigenous uh, Mansi people of the region. To avoid losing the altitude they had gained, or perhaps sim- simply because the team wanted to practice camping on a mountain slope, before their ascent to, of a Torten, uh, Dilatov called for camp to be made there. It was on this solitary mountainside that all nine hi- hikers would meet their demise. Ooh. It's, this is, like, really well written. It I, is. Thank the, you. The articles with it, wow. Hey. You did such a good job back then. Look at you. Thank you. Wow, I mean, back you then. Did, that sounded back so then. shady. Wow, wait, wait, you were really wait, good back then. Wait, what the heck wait, happened? Wait, hold on. I meant you were even good back then. There we wow, go. Wow, you were really good back then. What happened? <laughs> Ew. I mean, for the record, I wish I had the name of this article. It probably was just from an article. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. So you're a plagiarist. <laughs> so I'm a plagiarizer. Yeah. Um. So when February 20th rolled around and there was still no communication from the ski hikers, a search party was mounted. The volunteer rescue force that trekked through the Dilatov Pass found the campsite, but no hikers. So army and police investigators were sent in to determine what had happened to the missing students. When they arrived on the mountain, the investigators weren't hopeful. Though the students were experienced hikers, the route they had chosen was remarkably difficult. And accidents on tricky mountain trails are not unheard of. With so many days gone, they expected to find bodies and sad but uncomplicated answers. They were only partially correct. The bodies they found, yet the state in which they found them in only raised more questions. Their discovery would open a mystery that continues to this day. Burm, burm, burm. Let's see. I already, though, off the bat, I'm, like, remembering <laughs> this yeah. case already. Like, I re- I'm, like, it's coming back to my head of, like, how they found them. So, mm-hmm. uh... When investigators arrived at the campsite, the first thing they noticed was that the tent had been cut open from the inside, 
and most of the team's belongings, including several pairs of shoes, have been left there. Yep. It's yeah, I'm back remembering to it too. Oh my gosh. Uh, they then discovered eight or nine sets of footprints from the team, many of them clearly made by people with either nothing, socks, or a single shoe on their feet. Ew. These tracks led to the edge of the nearby woods, almost a mile away from the camp. That's crazy. That's a mile creepy. away. Yeah. That is, that's kind of far, especially up in the mountainsides. Oh the my gosh. tracks with one shoe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or no shoes. Or no shoes or no socks either. Like, Ugh. they saw barefoot went no go. Mm-hmm. Um, at the forest edge under a large cedar, the investigators found the remains of a small fire in the first two bodies. Yuri uh, Kravenchensko, yeah, nice. uh, 23, and Yuri Duroshenko, 21. Despite the temperatures of negative 13 to negative 22 Fahrenheit on the night of their deaths, both men's bodies were found shoeless and wearing only underwear. They oh. then found the next three bodies, those of Dilatov, uh, Zanata Kolomogorova, 24, and Rustam Slobodin, 23 who died on their way back to the camp from the cedar tree. While the circumstances were odd, the cause of death was clear. All the students have perished from hypothermia. Mm. Their bodies showed no indication of several external damage beyond what had been inflicted by the cold, though. It wasn't until the four bodies were found two months later that the mystery continued to deepen. Ooh. First off, I want to just say, you did an amazing job of pronouncing those names, and I'm Thank sure you did a much better job than I did when I... When you first did <laughs> when it. When I first did this case, <laughs> and even when I first started reading this, I completely skipped that guy's middle name, the Dilatov guy, like... Really? Because his name was too long, and I was like, like, I'm, I'm going to butcher it. But you did great. Thank you. I hear you. I try. I've tried with it. Um, but yes. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I love crazy. doing... Um, what is it? Whenever I get into, like... Because we haven't done as much true crime in the past, like, how we have been before. So, like, Mm -hmm. getting that, like, tone set up and, like, having, like, those moments is really um, interesting. It's nice to get back into, like, a different realm of mystery. And this one's definitely, Mm -hmm. it gets deeper. So, there was an even grislier scene at Dilatov Pass. So, the remaining students were discovered buried under the snow in a ravine 75 meters down deeper into the woods than the cedar, and their bodies told dramatically different stories than those of the other members of the group. Three of the six hikers, of the ski hikers, had fatal injuries, including Nikolai Thibault Brignolis, 23, who had suffered significant skull damage in the moments before his death, Ledumala de Benina, 20, and Semyon Zolarchov, 38, had major chest fractures that could only be caused by an immense force, comparable to that of a car crash. In the most gruesome part of the Dilatop Pass incident, Debanina was missing her tongue, eyes, parts of her lips, as well as facial tissue and fragment of her skull bone. They found the body of Alexander Kolotov, 24, in the same location but without the severe wounds. The second group of bodies suggested that the hikers had died at distinctly different times. They appeared to have been making use of the clothes of the people who died before them. Dubanina's foot was wrapped in a piece of mm. Krivonyshenko's wool pants, and Zolartyov was found in Dubanina's faux fur coat and hat, suggesting he had taken them from her after she had died, just as he had taken from Krivonyshenko. The mysterious circumstances at Dialatov Pass incident beg for an explanation, and many theories have been put forward. See, that's, like, the crazy thing. I'm glad we're taking a second, like, before we jump into the theories. Because I remember a couple of them from when we originally did this a few years ago. Yeah. Like, I'm remembering how, like, crazy it was. Because this is just, there's so many things that don't make sense or add up the way they should. That it's just, like, very weird that, like, originally they were like, oh, it was hypothermia. It was this. It was that. Um, But then just, like, finding, like, their bodies like that. It's, like, where, where does that come from? Yeah. Like, there's so many missing elements to it and it's just creepy there's like elements of like them wearing different people's clothes and like mm-hmm. how da Benina, yeah. like her whole body was like messed with you know yeah. what i mean it's like how did it get to that point yeah like yeah. what went on this is pretty dark yeah but i remember a lot of these theories are like pretty pretty good so mm-hmm. i'm gonna hop into it so 
there, for the theories, there are over 60 known theories of what transpired during the blizzard. Um, what the science tells us for sure is that the nine skiers could not have sustained their injuries from any object found in the vicinity, which will take us to theory one, mm. ambush. Early on, uh, many Soviets suspected that the students' deaths were the result of an ambush by the local Manzi tribesmen. It revolves around a sacred cave of the local Manzi tribe, which they use for ritual sacrifice. Mm. The tribe apparently does not like to share the mountain with outsiders, and when the Dalatov group uh, allegedly robbed their sacrificial cave of its various items, hunted them down in the night and killed them. A sudden attack would account for the way the hikers fled their tents, their disarray, and the damage done to the second group of bodies. So that explanation fizzles out quickly because the Mansi people were largely peaceful, and the evidence of the Dilatov past didn't support violent cave conflict. For one, the damage done to the students' bodies exceeded the blunt force trauma one human could inflict on another. There was also no evidence of any footprints on the mountain beyond those made by the hikers themselves. Oh. That's, like, a very, like, interesting one because I just feel... I know they kind of disregarded it already, like, hey, this is probably not what happened, but this is yeah. a theory. Um, it just feels, like, a little too, like, movie film-like to me. Yeah. Like, I just don't see a bunch of, like, college-age kids, like, robbing, like, a random cave, cave in the, like, in the mountainside. Yeah. I just, I, I don't see it. Also, um, like, the fact that it was literally, like, yeah, this is blunt force that, like, one human, there's right. no way a human could do this to another human. Right, which is where the theories get really eerie with they that, They get muddied. Too. Yeah. But, yes. Now we're on to theory number two, which is that this was all from an avalanche. Mm -hmm. So, investigators then conceived of a swift, violent avalanche. The sound of snow collapsing... An early warning of the deluge to come would have frightened the hikers out of their tents in a state of undress and sent them sprinting for the tree line. An avalanche would also have been powerful enough to inflict the injuries that killed the second group of students. Would the experienced hikers have made camp in a spot that was vulnerable to an avalanche? Then, too, there was the fact that the investigators found the bodies. They noted no evidence that an avalanche had occurred any time recently in the region. There was no damage to the tree line, and searchers observed no debris. No av avalanches had been recorded at that site before, and nor have there been any since. The avalanche hypothesis was characteristic of most of the theories put forward in the early days of the mystery. It offered an incisive solution to some aspects of the puzzle, but utterly failed to account for others. So that, That's where with that theory, I feel like that one could be true, but I think it's only partially true. Yeah. Like, there's no way, like... An avalanche did, like, what happened to, like, those bodies. Just, like, the dismemberment and, like, the exchanging of clothes and everything. Yeah. Like, even if the yeah, avalanche took them out, something transpired before the avalanche or even after. Yeah. Like, so there's still more to the story than just, oh, an avalanche just went through them. Yeah, because why would there not have been any proof of an avalanche? Mm -hmm. And, like, I guess you could argue, like, maybe there was some sort of avalanche, but the snow melted. Right. But there would still be some sort of debris. Like, there'd be, like, sticks or rocks or yeah, trees that know. got caught like, in it. Yeah, scientists are very good at finding that information. Yeah, so, eh, yeah, that's a pretty loose theory. I mean, I guess it would make yeah. sense for as far as the clothes. Like, if they were to accidentally grab someone else's clothes, but for all of them to just not grab their own, mm -hmm. all of them, it's a exactly. little weird. A little yeah. weird. Which I think leads me, I think, to the third theory, which I think is, like, from what I remember, one I think could have been a possibility. So, mm -hmm. theory three is hallucination. Others argue that the chaotic and violent deaths could have been the result of a strong and toxic moonshine-type beverage the group had procured from the local hunters, possibly also used re re ritualistically. The stuff could easily have caused psychedelic hallucinations, it is believed. This would have accounted for the haphazard escape and the group's apparently inexplicable behavior. There is still the fact of the tent ripped from the side, as well as the absence of any footprints outside the tent that did not belong to the members of the Dalatov group. It really does appear that the group had shout out, shot, out, shot out of the tent, running in different directions. The mystery of what really happened still seems to persist, though. Hmm. So, like, yeah, they're thinking it's, like, drugs. I'm not saying that it is drugs or, like, I'm, like, fully on board with that, but I think 
you know, some of the stuff that may have happened, if you're that disoriented, there is a possibility, like, yeah. things can happen. Like, depending on, like, what it was, too, like, it could really, like, mess with you, especially, like, in a high uh, environment like that, something just so... I don't want to say emotionally charged, but, like, I guess the idea of, like, we need to survive. And if you're already yeah. on, like, a psychedelic, it's, like, that anxiety will just be increased by, like, thousands. Yeah. Like, I feel like if they're in the middle of nowhere and they would have some sort of drug or alcohol effect that caused them to hallucinate, mm-hmm. I feel like they definitely could get to a point of, like, a some sort of psychotic break. But I guess it would have to be something strong enough that would make all of them feel this way. Yeah. To, like, act crazy enough to, like, yeah, be killing each other. Yeah, they all had to other. have been on that, like, strong enough for it. Yeah. That's a good point, too. I don't know. All of them yeah. had to have been to a weird enough place that they decided this was a way for them to go. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know. I guess I did forget about the part where, like, the tent was literally ripped from the inside. So it begs the question, so why wild. was it ripped from the inside? Why was it ripped? It yeah. had to be one of them. Oh, weird. Oh, weird, it weird, just weird. feels so creepy and creatureistic. Yeah. Oh my god. Unless one of them was trying to escape the tent themselves. Yeah. Because they're threatened by someone else, but they don't want to like mm-hmm. unzip the tent. So they're like, I'm gonna break out and right. cut the tent. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But our next theory is that the deaths were caused by a radioactive weapon. So other sleuths point to reports that small amounts of radiation were detected on the bodies, leading to wild theories that the students who had been killed by some sort of secret radioactive weapon. Those who favor this idea stress the strange appearance of the bodies at their funerals. The corpses had a slight orange withered cast, but had radiation been the cause of death? More than modest levels would have registered when the bodies were examined. The corpse's orange hue isn't surprising given the frigid conditions in which they lay. They had partially mummified in the cold. For many, the possibility of a mysterious military weapon is too intriguing to resist. Some say the ski hiking team was unfortunate enough to stumble into the USSR testing a concussive weapon or perhaps a parachute mine exercise. This explanation is a popular one because it is partially supported by the testimony of another hiking group, one camping only 50 kilometers from the Dialtop Pass team on the same night. This other group spoke of strange orbs, orange orbs, floating in the sky around Colet's cycle. A slight pro- proponent of this theory interprets as distant explosives. The hypothesis goes that the sound of the concussions drove the hikers from their tents in a panic, half-clothed, the first group died of hypothermia while attempting to take shelter from the blast by awaiting near the tree line. The second group, having seem- seeing the first group freeze, determined to go back for their belongings but fell victim to hypothermia too, while the third group got caught in a fresh blast further into the forest and died from their injuries. Lev Inilov, the chief investigator of the Dilatov Pass incident, said, quote, I suspected at the time, and I'm almost sure now, that these bright flying spheres had a direct connection to the group's death, when he in- interviewed by a small Kazakh newspaper in 1990. So, that one is definitely an interesting Wild. take. I feel like it's yeah. closer, but it's still... It accounts for more events, for sure. It accounts for more, but I feel like I don't know how much like the blast would have caused some of those injuries, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and... It- didn't it say, like, there wasn't a lot... I think I remember this from when we first did it. There wasn't a lot of evidence to prove that there was even a radioactive blast, right? Just yeah, like... I feel like there wasn't a ton of evidence. I'm also confused because this this other group that was there, if they were also seeing this, mm-hmm. wh- why didn't they die? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, like why? Did, how did they make it out okay? Yeah, and the thing is, if these people would have ran and got hypothermia or mm-hmm. whatever, couldn't they have just run back to their tent? Yeah. And gotten warm. Like, unless this was happening, these people were running, and, like, say mm-hmm. they got caught by some, like, military people. Right. And the military people were killing them because they were figuring out their secrets. Mm-hmm. I guess then I could be like, okay, this seems like a but just But then footprints, theory. how do they, like, hide those? Yeah. Why are their footprints there, but the other ones aren't? It's, it's like... Yeah, why are they still cutting through their tent? Yeah. It's like every single theory has, like, a loophole in it. It's just kind of like, yeah. you have to kind of just... I, it's so wild. Yeah, maybe these other people did it. Yeah, but other people that are seeing these, that were staying there the same night. Mm-hmm. It's all a little sketch, but that's yeah. that's that theory. And then for theory number five, this is the big one that they always come back to. I remember this from last time too. Is like they were like this 
is so simple that it's like, ugh. It's like, here we go. I guess. <laughs> you're right. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but so theory five is that it was hypothermia. So some tried to explain the hiker's strange behavior and lack of clothing with an in-depth look at the effects of hypothermia. Irrationality is a common early sign of hypothermia, and as a victim approaches death, they may paradoxically perceive themselves to be overheating, resulting in removed clothes. The trauma to the second group of bodies in this version of events is caused by a stumbling punch, plunge over the edge of a ravine. Yet hypothermia doesn't explain why the hikers left their warm tents in a panic for the frigid world outside in the first place. Mm. So this is what we talked about. I think it's not a theory, but I think creature, like there was something in those mountains in that area yeah. and they had to run from it, which they could account for the it. hypothermia, but like still though. I feel like it had to be something else mixed with hypothermia. Yeah. Like yes, I'm sh- I'm positive they got hypothermia because yeah. obviously they froze. Cuz they also the it. scientists said that too. Is yeah. that like it was proven that four of the bodies had died from hypothermia. Yeah, but like there has to be more than that. Those other people were staying in the woods too. Like why right. didn't they get hypothermia? Mm-hmm. It's just a, it's a little too easy for me. You know, I mm-hmm. think there's more to the story. Yeah. But now we're going to get on to the last theory, theory number 6, which is infrared sound. So this theory is that a repetitive wind event very likely produced an infrared pheno- infrasound phenomenon, which caused erratic behavior among the ill-fated campers. It is believed that the landscape along what became known as Dilatov Pass could produce the proposed infrasound anomaly. There are environmental factors that can contribute to humans sensing infra- infrasound, which includes sound pressure. Even when infrasound level tones cannot be heard, it is believed that the effects nonetheless be felt as vibrations within the body. This explanation implies that the sound waves were too low to hear and they could have subtly affected the minds of the skiers, panicking them and causing them to rush recklessly into the snow where the cold killed them. Hmm. So... That one's just a little... I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Huh? Uh, what? I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just a little like, bit. I feel like of those theories mm-hmm. that I'm thinking, I feel like the likely things that I think went on here, like if we were to mix what you were talking about with the creature in the woods, mm-hmm. possibly, I'm thinking they were on some sort of substance, whether that be like a moonshine that was like really very high in alcohol content. Yeah. Or, like, they were on some sort of hallucinogenic drug yeah. that made them all, like, kind of lose their mind and turn against yeah. each other. Like, and what like... if they felt sick, and that's why they left in the first yeah. place? Like, they felt sick or, like, contained in the tent, and, like, I need to get out. Yeah, like, I feel like they were yeah. all just kind of going stir-crazy because they were hopped up on some mm-hmm. sort of thing. Maybe they heard a sound in the woods and yeah. were, like, freaking out. Maybe they turned against each other, mm-hmm. and... Maybe it was a mix of hypothermia. They started tearing their clothes off because they thought they were hot. Maybe it was a mixture yeah. of, like, they're on the drugs and they think their clothes are too hot. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it could be a mix of all sort sorts of things. But I feel like either way, this whole story is strange. And it's just strange that all of them went crazy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think I remember when we did this during the radio show, I think you and I's conclusion, and I don't know if you still agree with this, but I yeah. think I do, is that I think it could be a mixture of, like, a lot of these theories. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of truth in all of them that you can pull to kind of make that story. So if you pull, like, theories from, like, each one and kind of try to streamline that, mm-hmm. you might get the answer that actually might have happened on that night. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I want to know the truth, though. Yeah. But I know, like, the fun of all these, like, ah, yeah. they're a mystery. I now remember now why this was, like, a fan favorite, because it's just yeah. very mysterious. Like, you like you and I were both even, like, I, I, I don't know. Well, it's, it's wild. I feel like there's just elements of it. Like, there's, how do you explain it? Like, I don't understand why there mm. were footprints that weren't theirs outside the tent. Yeah. I don't, exp- like, I don't understand why it was ripped from the inside. Mm-hmm. I don't understand what happened to that girl. Yeah. Why were there three different groups? I, there's just a lot that's a left lot. unknown. Mm-hmm. And even all these different theories still don't account for big Everything. parts of it. And, like, they all kind of contradict one another. Mm-hmm. It's so hard. It's really hard. But, oh. yeah. What was your favorite of the cases? I know that we covered three, three yeah. different ones and you chose yours. But... Was there one that you were excited about, or what were your favorite parts of the cases? I kind of like the last one we did just now, because, like, 
I feel like it was a return to form for us for like some stuff, but like I yeah. still really like talking about Jersey Devil again and like hearing yeah. you talk about past lives was cool. I originally wanted to do, I don't know if we did this during the mini series or if we actually did an episode on it, but I almost want to do the human combustion thing. Do oh you remember gosh, that? Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah, like that weird case that was from yeah. like 1900 something. With the woman? Yeah, yeah, wild also, case. Did we do the Watcher case before? What case? Watcher. With, like, the circle, circle letters. Was that the Watcher case? Remember that? Oh, I don't know. Because now there's a show on Netflix. Oh. But I feel like we've talked about it when we were a radio show. It was, Maybe like... we did. Something about... I'm looking up what We should have called. listed. We should have listed all the mysteries we did. But I we know. thought we were going to keep it accounted for. And then, you know, our show got bigger than, um... I think what you and I originally thought, and then it was like, oh, maybe we should have kept record that whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I th think it was called Circleville Letters. I think that was, was that the same thing? I'm looking it up. I don't remember. But I feel like it was either Circleville Letters or it's Watcher mm -hmm. or they're the same story. But I feel like that was one of our old mysteries. Well, maybe we can do this again. So um, yeah. for everyone listening, please follow us uh, at the mystery files underscore or like leave us a message through like the Q and a button option, which I'll leave yes. on here. Um, to let us know if you want us to do any more like all-star versions of this, cause we can yes. come back and do cases that we hadn't covered before. Definitely. I also um, found one for Zodiac when I was going to do Zodiac oh and you stole it from me. <laughs> Literally the same week I, like I was going to do it the so next funny. week and I like did it ahead of time and then Logan came You're through. Like, Logan! <laughs> I was so mad. Uh, but yeah, I found my Zodiac case. Maybe one day I'll get my day yeah. in the sun. But yeah. yeah, but I guess. All three of these all-star cases will remain. A mystery. Yeah. Thank you yeah. guys so much for tuning in to our Thank Halloween you. special. Happy we Halloween. love doing this yes, with all we of love you. It. And we love you guys. I also wore my Halloween vest for you guys Spooky, today. I did not. Wow. I wore gray. You, I guess <laughs> you just hate everyone. I do. You hate our fans. Really Heard it do. here first, folks. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, all guys. All right. We will see you next week Yay. for it. Yeah, space. yeah, it's my your case. turn. You're up, girl. All righty, <laughs> we will see you guys then. We love you the yes. most. Thank you. Check us out on the Instagram at the Mystery Files underscore. Check out that link tree. Find our YouTube. Yes, all the fun merchandise stuff. Merchandise as well. Red bubble. Red bubble. Yes. Check us out. We love you guys the most. Thanks as always, and have a nice Halloween. Goodbye. Bye.